Have you seen what's going on in Italy? Do you think we'll still have grad? I heard it's just the flu, it's fine. What do you mean you heard school will close down? Make sure you have your Google Classroom set up before our staff meeting. Ah, <sighs> March 2020 seems like a lifetime ago. I remember school was buzzing. I was planning and hosting my school's Purim celebration and hosting their assemblies. I had just finished writing my report cards. Spring break was now right within reach. I remember that feeling. And on a personal note, I was training and I was gearing up to compete in my first ever CrossFit competition. So things were busy, but they were manageable. But I remember that as the days turned into weeks, there was this strange new feeling and it, it just started to settle in. One by one, I remember plans were starting to be canceled and one by one events were beginning to be postponed. In staff rooms, there were these whispers of a concern over this virus that was slowly making its way throughout the world. And in classrooms, I remember that there was a not so quiet whisper of confusion and also of apathy. Guys, it won't happen to us. What's the big deal? My cousin in Israel says she doesn't have to go to school anymore. How fun. I think things are closing. These were some of the phrases I remember hearing on March 10th in my grade 12 class. I had given the students a work period to work on their essay, but all they or I could talk about was this thing called coronavirus and how it would affect us. My sister, who works at CJOB, always received information before the general public, and sometimes, if I was lucky, she would fill me in on things if they affected me. Her sister spidey senses must have been going off because while I was with my 12s, discussing what we think was going on, she texted me. Her text, simple and to the point, Gab, schools are next. March 16th, 2020. So the school had just given all of the students this extended long weekend so that we, the teachers and the admin, could wrap our heads around what was really being asked of us at this point. The ask? Oh, it's simple. Just take the next three days to completely change your educational approach and become an expert in online teaching. <laughs> I remember looking around at this meeting and seeing a wide array of reactions. Many raised eyebrows, of course. Many jaws dropped. And many of the younger teachers, myself included, worried that we wouldn't get anything done because the older, more senior teachers had already started to approach us and ask us for, for help. So we were a little bit worried. I remember there was even an outburst between some of the teachers and the admin just with the, all the stress that had been building up inside of them. But honestly, it did not matter. We still had a huge job ahead of us and no amount of yelling and no amount of complaining was going to stop it. As our meeting was wrapping up, it was also revealed to us that this new remote learning platform was going to be branded and renamed to be approachable and fun and the new name was revealed to be Gray Away. How cute. <laughs> These early days and weeks of Gray Away were reminiscent of how I felt in my last year of practicum. It was filled with lists and lists of things to do, and no matter how many items you knocked off, it never felt like you were making a dent because more and more things were always being added. We had to navigate between Zoom, Google Classroom, Seesaw, a constant flow of emails, and we had to teach. Teach! Teaching high school, I was left on an island, allowed to do what I needed to do in order to teach my material. In elementary, my grade one, two team and I would have nightly conversations about how we could do our best to teach our little ones without having them in front of their screens all day. This was our biggest struggle in the beginning. We would always end our conversation saying, let's just make it to Pesach break or Things will be better after Pesach. I'm sure we will be back in the classroom.
Dear staff, I'm sure by now you have seen the news from the province indicating how remote learning is going to work for schools. We here at Gray Academy have reviewed these guidelines and have taken them into account as we have set up Gray Away for our return from Pesach break. Okay? It has been established that the province will only require a certain number of minutes each day of live teaching. We, however, will be doing things differently. Each of you will be teaching all day, every day, via Zoom or Google Meet. We will be sending out a modified daily schedule to allow for longer lunches and movement breaks, but the expectation still remains that we be with our students for a full day of teaching. More details to follow. What the? How did this new normal affect high school? Okay, well, let me give you an example. There's this unit that I do every year on stereotypes and prejudices and discrimination, and it is something that I look forward to every year. So we start off, you know, by defining these terms in our own ways, and then we look at worldwide examples of this. However, the part that I look forward to the most are actually the conversations that emerge from these topics, these really deep, deep topics. I often have the students sit in a circle, and honestly, we just talk. We talk about how these terms have affected our lives, talk about how we feel helpless at times even. And honestly, this unit really brings such honesty from the students and it creates this closeness between peer and peer as well as between me and the class. And it's, I look forward to that every single year. And I miss these conversations so much right now. So now this unit has been reduced to, what is it, two working periods of a reader response type of activity. And I still have the students look at images and videos on the topic, but it's just not the same. Our conversations and important discussions are replaced with long answers and essays. As teachers, we always try to look for the lessons or values in everything we do. What was the desired outcome of our last math lesson? What will the students take away from the lesson in Jewish history? And so on and so on. But thinking back to these last three months of remote learning, it is hard to find the value or lesson, mainly because looking back, I know as a teacher that this was not teaching. This last three months did not reflect or represent my passion for teaching and why I got into education in the first place. Yes, on paper, the students were with me, virtually learning throughout the last third of the year, but what about their emotional well-being? What about their socialization with other people? What about learning through play or inquiry? I do feel like we tried our best in creating breakout groups that represented our normal math centers or with reflections in the high school so the students still had a chance to share their feelings and not just worry about the right answers. We tried. This was all new and I really feel like we tried. I guess, thinking about values and lessons, I as a teacher got a lesson in technological advances in the educational world. I know I am supposed to idealize technology and utilize it more and more and more within education, but I think what I truly got out of all of this is that teachers can never be replaced. Sitting in front of a screen all day doing paper pencil assignments does not replace a classroom full of discussion and exploration. Marking based purely on assignments and essays does not replace anecdotal observations. And relationships between a teacher and a student is strong enough to weather any storm. Right now, the world is praising teachers and acknowledging our worth. I hope if we return to remote learning in the, in the future, that teachers will continue to receive this support and continue to be valued and continue to do what they do, teach.